Close your eyes. Focus on your breath. Make up your mind you're going to stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Now you have to make up your mind to do this because there are parts of the mind that don't want to go along. They want to think about this and plan for that, worry about this, all kinds of other things. It's like you have a whole assembly in there. Lots of different opinions, lots of different agendas. And so you've got to make sure you're going to protect your agenda to stay here with the breath. Be on the lookout for any thoughts that would pull you away. Just learn how to recognize them and drop them. Recognize them and drop them. Stay with the breath as much as you can. Because when you're doing good like this, there are bound to be obstacles. Now it's bad enough that there are obstacles out there in the world. All the different things in society that would pull you away from training the mind. What you want to make sure is you don't have obstacles in your mind as well. Because that's where they really are the worst kinds of obstacles, because you think you're doing what's right, you think you're doing what's good for yourself, and you end up doing something else entirely. It's because other members of the committee have gotten involved. So when we have a good intention like this, we have to make sure it's not just good, but also skillful. Learning how to watch out for anything else in the mind that's going to come and try to undermine what you're doing. Understanding where it's coming from and understanding why you don't have to go along with it. So there are techniques here for staying with the breath. You make it comfortable, you make it interesting as you work with the breath energy through the body. But there are also values, understanding why this is important and why you really do need to spend time letting the mind settle down so it can actually see things clearly inside. Because a lot of these committee members don't want you to see them. They operate in the darkness. So you've got to learn how to shine some light to where they are. Notice where they're coming from, what they're doing. And many of them, when you shine the light in them, they just shrivel up. Others, though, are pretty resistant. Those are the ones you have to dig down a little bit deeper. But to do that digging down, the mind needs to have a sense of well-being that comes from the concentration. So this is your first priority, getting the mind to settle down and what, being on the watch out for anything that's going to pull you away. This is why alertness is such an important part of the meditation. You're alert not only to what the breath is doing, but also alert to what's going on underground in the mind. So when there's a temptation to go wandering off, you recognize it for what it is and you pull the mind back to the breath. Keep it with the breath. Keep it with the breath. Make the breath especially gratifying, especially satisfying. That's one way of strengthening your original intention. So what was started out just as a good intention becomes a skillful intention, because you learned all the skills to protect it so that nothing else comes slipping in. In this way, you're a friend to your own practice. And in spite of the obstacles that are out there in the world, you're not adding any obstacles of your own. Because the obstacles out in the world, those are things that can be overcome. The obstacles inside, those are the ones that are really hard and really important. So you've got to learn how to watch for them from the very beginning and be on the lookout. Because that's what protects the mind, this quality of heedfulness. Everything good comes from heedfulness. This is the beginning of skillfulness. This is what turns the good intention into a skillful intention, is when you're heedful of the dangers and you prepare for them. And that's how the mind can really develop and grow. And 